I said, I think Cleveland's going to be 9-7. and seven. They're going to struggle early. Then they're going to win a bunch of games late. And they'll be vying for a playoff spot. That got me major pushback from Baker, from Odell, from Cleveland fans. A franchise that's 1-16 the previous three years against playoff teams. You know, the teams you got to beat to get to the playoffs. My hot take, I think they'll struggle early, new coach, young roster, new parts, but I think they'll be pretty good at the end of the year when they face bad, bad teams. Yesterday was exactly what Cleveland deserved. You ever gone to a party, Thanksgiving dinner, a family gathering, and you have all sorts of interesting people you want to talk to and hear from, but you can't because the dumbest person at the party is also the loudest. Isn't that the way it works at the bar? The dumb guy is always the loudest guy. No success in his life, but has all the answers. That's Cleveland. Their GM got fired. Loudest GM in the league. Their quarterback had a losing record. Baker, loudest quarterback in the league. Their fans, I mean, a laughing stock. Loudest fans in the league. It's the worst thing when you're around interesting people and there's interesting conversations to be had over a glass of wine and a good meal and dumb guy is loud guy. And so you drive home with your wife and you're like, yeah, that was awful. The, the guy that shouldn't have been talking did all the talking and um, you got what you deserved. There was two quarterbacks in the NFL yesterday, by the way, that embarrassed themselves. Not every quarterback had good games, but Baker Mayfield and Jameis Winston and they're the same guy. Talent, not denying the talent. There's things I like about both. But in college, both showed really, really regrettable judgment. And as I've said many times in my life and many times on this show, you are at 19 what you were at 9. You just have facial hair if you're a guy. You shave now. You have a girlfriend now. You don't change. And I think Baker's going to struggle and have days like yesterday in his entire career. Bad judgment. By the way, this Cleveland team, the, the receivers wearing a $350,000 watch, how lit. But this team made a move, and everybody was falling in love with the OBJ move and the Olivier Vernon move and the Sheldon Richardson move. This team made a move in March that I hated and all my sources in the league hated. They have a bad O line, and they traded away their second-best offensive lineman to get Olivier Vernon. It made the papers, and it was splashy, but this league is about details, and it was a terrible move. And Baker yesterday was under constant duress, and Baker's not that athletic, and he's not very big. And the good teams like the Chargers that faced him last year figured him out. Bull rush him. Hands up. He's small. Your defensive ends are faster than him. He's not a great athlete. And this offensive line is bad, and it, and it can't, over the course of this year, become great. Okay, this, this problem's not going away. Now, do I think Cleveland will get better, and Baker will, ha will have great days, and OBJ will have great days, and Freddie Kitchens won't be completely out coached and out of sync? Yes, 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 yes. But this offensive line is the liability, and their GM, the loudest GM in the league, traded away their second-best offensive lineman, and nobody talked about it. Just like nobody talked about the stuff that really matters in the NFL, like details and not getting penalties. And Cleveland yesterday, by the way, people say, well, Cleveland always struggles in week one. It's never this bad. 18 penalties? That's the worst since 1951. Lost by 30? Even Cleveland hasn't done that in like 20 years. And by the way, there's plenty of teams in this league that are going to get better. I think Cleveland's going to be better this year. I think Buffalo's going to be better this year. I think San Francisco is going to be better this year. I think the Jets are going to be better this year. And I've said that for the last two months. But you don't hear Bills players and GMs and coaches and Jets players and coaches and San Francisco players and coaches talking about Super Bowl. They got what they deserve. This league will humble you. So come into it being humble and that drop in the embarrassment will not be as severe. Finally, yesterday, Freddie Kitchens finally sounded humble. Baker, three picks, pick six. That was dangerous. Do yourself a favor. All you guys out there in life, less successful you are, thinner resume, shh, don't talk as much. Later in life, pad the resume, success, make some lettuce, got some wins, have a trophy, have a ring. Talk all you want. Cleveland, you had no business ever one time calling yourself dangerous, 
You were nothing more than interesting. And by the way, next four weeks, four good pass rushes against that Cleveland offensive line. They will be a good team by about week nine, but they got what they deserved. If you're not humble, the league will humble you. All right, let's segue to this. Uh, I'm going to talk about Steelers Patriots in about 10 minutes. Let's talk about the A-B to the Patriots. Now, you, you know how I feel about A-B. Uh, I think Pittsburgh eventually is going to be fine without him. They're good at finding receivers. I think Oakland and A-B was never going to work. It was a bad match. Uh, my takeaway on uh, A-B and New England, I will tell you. But first, of course, I'm going to show you the video. A-B finds out. Many people thought he manipulated his way to New England. It was this sinister plan. I don't really buy conspiracy. But this video was pretty funny when A-B found out he was a patriot. Um, now let's talk about New England and Antonio Brown. I'm hearing a lot of this. It's going to be Randy Moss. Oh, no, it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be Ocho Cinco. I don't think it's going to be either. Uh, I do not think... I'll put it this way, is that I, I tend to believe uh, child psychologists, psychologists will tell you this, your, your personality is formed fairly early, and you don't move off it much, even if you wanted to move off it. AB's rich. He's not moving off it. Um, I think this will work for a year or two, and that's all Bill Belichick wants. Bill Belichick's paying him $10 million. <laughs> and by the way, when he leaves, he'll get a compensatory draft pick. <laughs> this, is, this is really no risk. This defense for New England is so good. If A.B. acts up, he's out. They're going to get to the AFC Championship. Super Bowl, I don't know, because of Kansas City. They're going to get to the AFC Championship with this defense and Brady and Belichick. They're just going to get there. It's the best New England defense I have seen since the Teddy Bruschi days. There's no risk here. We're not paying him anything. Julio Jones. A lot of people yesterday, I got a lot of texts from players and GMs, and they were like, this is bad for the league. It's bad for the league. And I'm like, not really. The winner this weekend was not A.B. The winner this weekend was Julio Jones, who this morning got a $64 million check direct deposited into his bank account. $64 million. A.B. made 10 He lost $20 million this weekend. Not a big winner. He went to a winning organization. My takeaway is this is going to feel like Darrell Revis to the Patriots. I never felt Darrell Revis was the Patriot DNA, but Bill needed him. And Bill had a roster he loved, and Bill had an offense he loved, and he thought, I'm not losing a Super Bowl because I can't make a stop on the defense. And I think Bill Belichick looks at this defense and says, I'm not losing a Super Bowl because I can't go over the top and just outscore Kansas City. I think some of this is facing Patrick Mahomes. And I think Belichick knows this is the best and deepest, smartest defense I've had ever in New England, or at least in 10 years. I'm not losing to Patrick Mahomes in a shootout because I can't make one more play. And I don't think it's a huge risk. It's Darrell Rivas. It's mutually beneficial. If the player A.B. leaves, they get a draft pick. If he doesn't, they keep him for a couple years. They're keeping him because he's giving you great production. Now, I do think A.B.'s personality is different than New England's personality. He tends to be a little cocky. They're humble. He tends to be public. They're private. But I don't see it as a disaster, and I don't see it as Randy Moss. Remember, New England has done this. New England dates everybody. They've married one, Tom Brady. They, they're Tinder, not eHarmony. They date all sorts of personalities. Albert Hainsworth and Ocho and Randy Ma. They do this all the time. Small college schools, big college schools. Sometimes they have a guy, Jamie Collins. He ticks them off. They trade him to Cleveland. They get him back, and he comes back, and he's great. New England gets coaches to come back. Josh McDaniel. They get players to come back. Josh Gordon. I mean, Cle this is what New England does. New England samples all sorts of personalities and relationships Coaches leave and come back. Players come to New England, Josh Gordon, make a mistake, leave, come back. Jamie Collins, we had him. He ticked us off. He leaves, disappears. He comes back. They date. They're tender all the time. They've had one serious long-term relationship, Tom Brady, and only because Tom plays by their rules. Tom takes a pay cut. Tom is coachable. Tom lets Belichick yell at him in public. This is what New England does. This is not shocking. It's not ruining the league. It's what they do. And there's a reason adoption agencies take so long with vulnerable kids going into families. They want to make sure the family is right. And organizations win Super Bowls, not players. Organizations. Organizations. NBA players win championships. NFL organizations do. AB's not worth a point. OBJ's not worth half a point. And this organization is amazing, 
And this player tends to be dramatic, has moved a lot, would make a lot of teams vulnerable, sometimes himself feels vulnerable. But it'll work. I, 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 it'll work. We all date, then we marry one. They've made a decision in New England who their lifelong mate is. It's Tom Brady. That's that. That allows them all sorts of opportunities to go on Tinder and check out new and fun. And this is no big deal. I don't think it ruins the league. The winner this this week was Julio Jones. AB wasn't even the biggest winner financially at his position. Uh, I think we tend to overreact. I think AB can make people uncomfortable who love the structure of the NFL and it makes it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. He's a diva. Sleek's had divas for 50 years. <laughs> and I felt I've seen AB a thousand times. And it generally works the same way. T.O. Ocho A B. You didn't watch him in college. They come into the NFL, and after about six years with their first team, you're like, oh, my God, they're all tied. And they go to a couple teams, and it doesn't work out. And then they eventually get somewhere, T.O. to Philadelphia or A.B. to New England. And it kind of works for a couple years. Randy Moss was like D.O.A., and then it worked. It, and then they kind of go back eventually in three or four years. A.B. will be rich and, you know, kind of dramatic in A.B. Um, but I, I think it feels like Darrell Rivas. Bill Belichick said, this team's too good. I'm not losing it because I have one weak corner. And I think Belichick looks at this defense and says, I'm not losing the Super Bowl because I can't beat Patrick Mahomes. I can't stop him. And I just need one more big play. And they got Tyreek. And I, I, I don't have a guy that can equal that. And I think Belichick's rolling the dice. And I think it's smart. And I think it'll work. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.